Wow. Would you cut it? Get my apron. Oh. You can sing it. Good. 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 Good morning. Morning. Mike, 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 Mike. Wow, Kayla is back from what day a is hiatus. It? I love it. Hump day. Hump day. Good morning, team. Let's say good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. To Tiffany, Tiffany, Jeanette, Kayla, Kayla Brogan, Brogan, and Stacy, Andy, <laughs> Susanna, Corey, Corey Michelle, Michelle, Jerry. Uh, there's more people, but that's who we can see. So, oh, well. good morning to y'all. Good morning, you guys. And if we didn't say your name, please say hello so we can see that you're here. Unless you're driving, that's not safe. Sure, sure. Don't do that. And happy Wednesday. So as you guys know that Wednesday are it involve our money conversations, okay? These are super important conversations that, let's be real, society is uncomfortable talking about. Women are extremely uncomfortable talking about money. But guess what? If you don't talk about it, you, you can't ain't be, be about you it. You can't. You ain't being about it. And if you ain't being about it, guess what? We got a serious problem. Then you ain't eating. Think about. Think about the 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 richest people on earth, right? Like Warren Buffett. He talks about his money all the time because he's playing the game. Now, you know whatever your financial goal is, right? You need to figure out your financial goal for one. But if you're currently unsatisfied with your with where you're at and you know that you can do a better job or if you are struggling, right? You guys, if we're talking about numbers, 76% of Americans is that and that's pre-COVID days are living paycheck to paycheck. Pre-COVID. Okay? Only 4% of Americans have more than $100,000 in their savings account. How many Americans are there? Like 300 million. 300 million. What's 4% of that? So, it, it, these numbers obviously state the fact that as a society, we're not taught anything with regards to money. And that's why it's an issue. I mean, here's the thing. When you go to school, you know, you, you hear about, um, you, you learn history and you that's learn to number. read and do two plus two. But here's the thing, like you don't learn the most important stuff, right? Like you don't learn how to take care of yourself, how to take care of your body, how to take care of your money. And that's why everybody, the minute they leave school, they end up being broke and overweight. And so the cycle begins. Right. 288 million Americans. Wait. That's 96%. Right. So have less than $100,000. So only 20 million to only 20 million Americans have but this number looks more dramatic. Right. That's how bad it is. So, so think about it. Like, even if you had a hundred thousand dollars in your savings account, which is not a lot, if you think it's a lot, then I, then your standards are low. We are here because you are here because you want to be not average. Right. You want to rise above that ish. Yes. But like think, think, you know, nobody knows your life better than you, right? So like I want you to take a second to think about your expenses and all of the things that you have going on in your life. If you were to not have any money coming in starting today, right? And let's say you had $100,000 in your savings account, how long will that last for? Like how long can you survive not that without long. making money? That is... Mr. Kiyosaki's definition of, of wealth, wealth, right? Yeah. How long can you survive without working? Yeah. And if you have enough passive income to survive without working the rest of your life, you have like ultimate wealth. 
you are not no longer in the rat race. You are wealthy, yes. But um, you know, today's conversation is really to to discuss the issue of why you have only a certain amount of money to get by, right? We know that this is an issue, right? Um, and it's sad because when somebody says, I don't have $47 to invest in a metabolic reset program right now, you are, you're just limiting yourself from getting better, right? And money is, it's a resource and it provides you an opportunity with regards to exchange. And that is why it's so important to talk about it. Because if you only have just enough to get by, right, which means that you're struggling and you're stressed the fuck out, you're not, you're limiting yourself the opportunity of actually becoming better, okay? So now, if you're in this state, if you're in this current state, the good news is that that does not have to define your destiny unless you let it okay so if you're listening to today's episode then you know what congratulations to you now i just thought about a photo that i saw i was looking through photos can i tell them well did you have to sign anything about it i well i can say i'm going to be on a game show i don't have to say what it's called oh so anyways i was looking through photos because i had to submit photos because i'm going to be on a game show which is amazing um, and I was looking through them and I saw, I found a photo of us and this, this is how this relates to this topic. Okay. We were in the first apartment that we moved into in California, like four years ago. The one in OB? Uh, I mean, Mission National. Valley. Oh, okay. That one. And we, uh, were literally sitting on the floor with just a mattress on the floor against the wall with like cardboard boxes, like we Even had the nothing. Chicken? Yeah, we had nothing. I remember. We had nothing the there. Yeah. And you know, it's in that place where you could think that that's your destiny, or it would be easy to believe that this is what, this is just my life, or accept a lot of people, I think just accept where they are, living paycheck to paycheck. I wanna encourage you to think outside the box. And I wanna encourage you to believe that you're capable of more that you can make more money or you can earn more money. Um, and another thing that Kiyosaki says all the time is, is it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you can keep. And by that he means how, what are your in, income to expenses ratio, right? Um, and so I want to encourage you to just know that if we were had nothing uh, sitting on uh, just a mattress without even a bed at that point and we are where we are now which then, is nowhere close to where we want to be which is nowhere way. close to where we are supposed to be and uh, then you can do the same thing I want to fix the way you said you said it. We are supposed to be here right now. We are supposed to be here, but we're not destined to be here. Well, we okay. You're right. We're supposed to be here, but in my mind, I'm not here. Oh, you're in my mind. Yes. I am. Got it. Got it. Got it. Where okay. I want to be. Okay. I, I want to make sure that they understand us correctly. Your words are important. So now you know. Just a couple of things. For one. The reason why we weren't stressed out in this situation is because we knew that the situation that we were in was simply a stepping stone. We took a lot of calculated risks. Now, the reason why I'm saying calculated risks is because to the um, extremely rational person, there's no way in hell they would have like done what we've done um, in order to have climbed the ladder be simply because... There were so many unknowns and it's scary. However, when you're int intuitive and you have faith, and that is why we always talk about the concept of giving yourself enough time to learn to listen to your intuition, right? Had we not done that, we could have in that point being in a slightly more comfortable spot 
However, we wouldn't have given ourselves permission to be where we are today. It would have been temporarily been comfortable. Right, temporarily comfortable, right? So short, short-term short comfort for long-term pain, right? So, so know that, okay? The point of that is that your current situation does not de- have to define your destiny unless, unless you believe that that is the case. So if you're like, my life right now is not going to be my life one year from now and 10 years from now, amazing, right? You're, you're destined for greatness. Each and every one of you guys are 100%. Go ahead and give me a hundred percent comment. Drop a hundred percent comment if you believe that you're destined for greatness. However, very rarely do people give themselves permission to channel in the opportunity of being destined for greatness. So they accept all these stats, like seventy-six percent of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. The average American earns however much money per year. Or right, like you are I think not it's like fifty thousand. You are not the average American. You're not average. You never so, want to be compared to the average. You want to be compared to whoever is at the top. If you hear okay. what average is, expect more from yourself. Except expect a hundred times or a thousand times more. Comparing yourself to the average is a very low, low standard of living. The average American is overweight. Um, taking at least three medications every single day has hypertension, pre-diabetic. That's not a life to live, that, but that's an average life, right? So like if you're here, you're ready to rise above that shit, okay? Um, now, I want to ask you guys a question and I would love it if you guys can get vulnerable with us. Can, Sim- I, can I say one statement that goes off of yeah. that? Um, that's what Boogie had to say. Um, you get what you believe. So if you believe that life is hard, life is going to be hard. If you believe making money is difficult, you're going to have a difficult time making money. If you believe that you struggle to pay your bills, you're going to struggle to pay your bills. But if you believe you are wealthy, you will become. Now, there's another side to that, that we've all heard this, or maybe not, but a lot of you I know have heard of the um, law of attraction. And, you know, if I, if I can think it, it will come to existence, but it will not void of action. Mm -hmm. So you can't just sit your ass on your couch and say, I believe I'm going to be a millionaire and then expect to look at your bank account and see a million dollars in there. Um, It does require action. Mm -hmm. And we were just having a conversation yesterday about how when you want to sell something or you want to get somebody to do something that you want them to do. Which is basically selling them. You you need convincing. People today want to hear that it's going to be easy. It's going to be fast. You're not going to have to put a lot of effort in. It's going to happen quickly. Um, you know, it, all of these things, which is so far from the truth. And, and we were having, we were talking about ads and we were talking about making ads. Many of you are here because you saw an ad that we made. And the trick for us is how do we be authentic I feel like I'm getting off track, but whatever, um, in how, in our approach, but also get you to buy into it because we have the truth. We have the truth, but most people don't want to hear the truth. And the truth is you have to work hard. You have to put in effort. You have to show up when you don't feel like showing up. And if you're not okay with those things, then you will forever struggle. So I say that so that you will be encouraged and inspired to be okay with working hard, to embrace that anything worth having is worth working for. Amen. Anything worth having. Hey, if you had to bust your ass for uh, 10 years of your 90 year life so that you could live uh, 
60 of them or 50 of them or 40 of them feeling completely financially free, is that 10-year grind worth it? Type in the comments, Shit. yes or no. You Type know what in I mean? the comments, yes it's or the no. Same, it's the same with weight loss. Would you rather take an entire year or year and a half or even two years to get to your goal if it meant that you got to stay there and continue to get better for the rest of your life? Yeah, but we don't think so long term because we're, our attention spans have been so shortened by all the technology and simplicity, uh, uh, convenience that we have that now it's like, I want everything now. Hello, Amazon Prime. Can I order a six pack, please? Two day shipping? Right. Like it, that doesn't happen that way. And so I want to just open your mind to know, like embrace hard work. Um, don't just work smarter, work smarter and harder. Mm -hmm. And think outside the box. If you don't have enough money, make sure you're not making excuses. Like I don't have time, I don't have whatever, whatever. You can always find, but make sure also you're not above any position. You are not above any position. Amen. If I was broke as fuck, I would work at McDonald's. I, I don't even want to step my foot inside a McDonald's because it grosses me out. But I would work there if I had to. I would do anything if I needed to. So depending on what you want, you gotta, you gotta know you're not above anything and you also need to think outside the box and be willing to put in the work. That's the truth. But everybody wants to hear, get rich quick, make a million dollars in one year. Um, you know, I wanna add something to that. The greatest things in life and you know, the reason why we, we changed the format of our show where we now not just talk about um, health and weight loss, but also about money and relationships is because the greatest things in life, the greatest things in life, if we're talking about health, wealth, and love, don't all of us want these three things? And if you had these three things consistently, you'll be happy for the rest of your life, right? They all involve patience. You have to be patient. And because we live in the 21st century, when things come at you fast, I mean, if, if, if you think about it, Kerrygold butter that comes from Ireland is in your fridge, right? Like, you know, anything is accessible to you in this very moment right now. Now, the internet is an amazing thing and we are extremely grateful for it because we want to have the opportunity to speak to 37 of you guys live right now and however many thousands on YouTube, right? Um, however, because we live in the 21st century, the downfall is that people no longer have patience. People no longer have patience, right? But the greatest things in life involve hard work. And here's the thing, probably 10 times harder than what you would expect it to be. Also patience and consistency. Yeah, and patience. You gotta stay the course. It requires you being consistent. Don't try, don't try to, to, you know, recreate something new if whatever you're doing is working, right? But things, people feel like they, they need to always be on the next great, greatest thing, like the fanciest, most attractive sounding diet, intermittent fasting, keto, blah, blah, blah. How about you just learn to eat clean and stay the course and work out consistently? It's that simple and the same with money. L learn to earn it, learn to save it, learn to multiply it. That's how it's, that's the cycle. And that's how it goes when it comes to relationships, right? Learn how to communicate with yourself and treat your body, right? Learn how to communicate with others, right? Don't make it about yourself and you will get whatever it is that you want from any person in life. 100%. Um, it was about two years ago, I think I finally realized that life is the game that you make it. Amen. Life is a game. It's a game. Money is a game. It's a game. But if you learn how to play the game, you can win. Um, Nicole, if you say that your student loans are just there for life, then they're going to be there for life. I wouldn't say that. But... I get what you're saying. Student loans they're, are are a killer. They're and, a pain in the ass. And this is the problem. And this is the problem with the educational system. You 
you you leave high school thinking that in order to be successful right you you need to go to college here's here's the thing about schools schools don't teach you the real fundamentals of life they don't they don't teach you how to persuade people right um and I believe that life is all about the human connection. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have, if you don't know the right person or how to convince the right person, you will never get what you want out of life, right? Schools don't teach you how to treat your body right. If anything, you go to school, you end, you end up graduating from school, gaining at least 30 pounds or more, right? I know that because I've seen it on myself, right? Um, and then, you know, you leave the moment you, you end up graduating from school. Yes, you have a certificate, but you also have this thing called hundreds of thousands of dollars in loan and probably feeling anxious and depressed because you actually don't know what's next. And the first job that you get pays you like nothing. Yeah. It's crazy how much we pay for college. And then I, I wonder the percentage of people who who actually do nothing with their college degree. You are one of them. Yep. Actually, I wouldn't say you do nothing. I would say you discovered what you wanted to do, yeah. which is not that. For me, it was a stepping stone, 100%, and I will never take it back because of it, and I learned a lot about myself in college. That was my greatest gift. I was away from everybody. I, you know, I gave myself permission to be who I was, to go through my own shit, to realize I was gay, to come out, to go through all that shit, you know, it's a part of the process, but again, life is what you make of it. I went to college for a little less than four years. I have zero degrees because it was in a bunch of different stuff, but I learned from every single one of those. And at one point, I didn't even care to get a degree. All I wanted to do was learn what I wanted to learn for what I cared about so that I could do things that I wanted to do for my future. So I... Actually, I think I have like four grand left in debt and um, I think they actually have zero interest right now until like September. So it, it gonna be gone But thank God for that anyways, um, yeah student loans are a real thing, but um, Normally you come out of college and it's like you are making the, the like lowest amount of money for whatever's that you're doing Even if it has to do with what you got your degree in or not but I think that there's a lot that needs to change in the school system. But that's a different yeah. topic. Okay, so so let's talk about, you know, the problem of why do you only have just enough to get by? Okay, and I wanna I want you guys to get vulnerable with us for a second because if you're in this group, you know that we're all about keeping it real and we're totally okay getting vulnerable in front of you. So we expect the same from you. Would you categorize yourself to be that person who is currently only having just enough to get by? If you do, then say just enough. Say, say, I deserve more. Yes, say, I deserve more. I deserve more. I deserve more. Like, we, we'd love to see that. And the reason why, the, why I'm asking you this is not be it's because we want to empower you and because by understanding what is your current financial situation this helps us to really um, like put together which topics would come in in the perfect order we all deserve more yes but we're trying to but get you come consensus. first you can't you can't change others you can only change yourself there we go there we go there we go Amen, amen, amen. Even if you even if you are not stressed about money, you could still want more. Yep. Yep. I love it. Okay, good. So so I think we're on the right track. The, so the truth is I de you all deserve more. Yes. One hundred percent. As long as you believe that. And and Knowing that you deserve more and speaking it out loud, by the way, doesn't make you greedy. Money, wanting money doesn't make you greedy. Yes, but I feel like women have this hang up that if they're asking for more, it's like, I don't want to seem as if I'm greedy. I, I know that yeah. because 
for a very long time, right? Until I met certain people who became life mentors to me, taught me that there's nothing wrong with, mo with wanting more, right? But because money is this taboo topic, right? Yeah, like um, money equals greed. It's like, oh my right. God, she wants more. Why is she like unsatisfied? She's a rebel, right? Yeah, or it's like, you don't, you don't get to be a billionaire by not wanting more, right? Jeff Bezos wants more. Yeah. He has more than enough. And I guarantee you that dude still wants more. Yeah. The thing is for some people, it's like a, it, it is a game. Money is a game. Money is like a sport to some people. Like it, it's not a matter of like, there are people who have more money than they could spend even if they wanted to, but because in their mind, it's some kind of like sport or, or game to them. They just are constantly figuring out how to get more. Now that, that doesn't mean that they're greedy. That doesn't mean that they're bad people. That doesn't mean that um, they don't care about anybody else. A lot of very wealthy people actually donate a shit ton of money. And honestly, that's one of the reasons that we are going the direction that we are going. Um, one of our inner circle girls, Jessica Knox, um, we, were, we were having this conversation about how um, Domino's delivered a bunch of pizzas to the hospitals for the nurses oh my gosh, to help so feed bad. them. And I'm like, so that bad. is such a great... That is such a great, um, um, what's the word? Generous. It's a generous gesture. Gesture. But I was like, this is why I want a ridiculous amount of money because I want to be able to feed the nurses, not pizza. Yeah. That breaks my heart. Like, like the, the gesture intention is good, but the action yes. is bad. The intention is so good. And, and my hat goes off to them, right? Like they're doing a good thing. Yeah kind of <laughs> like the intention is really good, but they don't need pizza, right? So yeah. you're trying to feed the people who are taking care of other people, things that are not going to help them. Right. So it's like, I, I wished in that moment, I was like, man, I wish that I had the financial means right at this moment to, to feed those nurses way better food to send like a hundred rotisserie chickens to the hospital for the nurses to just have, you know what I mean? Like something that will actually benefit them. Yeah. Um, so anyways, if you think about the reason why, if you have a problem with like thinking that, oh, money equals greed, or like, I'm afraid to ask for more or want more. This is a huge mindset thing or a limiting belief and, and that you, you struggle to get money because you feel like, other people are going to see you a certain way if you want more money. Mm -hmm. It's all about what somebody else thinks about you. We all want more money. Yes. Like it, because it provides opportunity. So if you ask yourself, why do I want more money? It's probably for good reasons. And that's not, that's good. Look, it needs to be your duty and obligation to take care of your family. And you know what? Taking care of your family means providing them with enough and as far as I'm concerned unlimited resources not enough enough is like stressing you out unlimited it's like okay you want to do this let's do it right you want to go to the best school okay we can do that right yeah. like that is why it needs to be your duty and obligation right. um, but I think it's because money has always been this taboo topic especially for women, it's like, ah, oh, let's not talk about it. I mean, think about it. Until like 50 years ago, women weren't even a part of the workforce. We are still fighting for women's rights in this country, right? Like equal pay, all that bullshit. Like there, you know, there's so much that we still have to go. We've come a long way, but we still have a farther, a, a much farther way to go. And that is why, you know, we chose to have these conversations because it is extremely important. Um, Can, who has ever flown on a plane? Ever in their entire life? Let's assume everyone. Plane emoji, plane emoji, drop a plane emoji. Let, we can assume everyone except for maybe one hippie or something um, that lives in the middle of nowhere, which well, I don't even know how you would be accessing this video right now. But um, why would hi hippies would I totally mean, fly? They'll want to go see you're the right, You're right, you're right. I mean cavemen. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. 
when they tell you if the plane is going down and your life is in danger and the oxygen mask falls, do you put yours on first or do you put your neighbors on first? You fucking save your own life because if you don't save your own life, you can't save theirs. Motherfucker. Exactly. It's the same thing with everything is what we preach. Like so many women give their time to everybody else and then you take whatever's left, which is nothing. Let's be honest. So then you try to uh, lose weight or work out or eat healthy or meal prep or do the things that you know are going to help you feel the best about you. But there is no time because you've given it to everyone else. You got to give it to you. Otherwise, there is nothing to give to anyone else. You got to take care of you financially and your family before you can take care of anybody else who has parents that are getting in their older ages and they're going to have to like be taken care of eventually. I know that my, my, my parents are not there, but they're getting, they're getting older. Yeah. Right. And eventually they're going to need to rely on me, but I got to take care of me before I can take care of them. But guess what? Like my parents were so awesome to me that I want to be awesome to them. I need money for that. And you want to be awesome to them 10, ten times more. Yeah. Because you grew up with a lot of limits. I remember right. the, a lot of the things you told me. Right. Um, so, so that needs money. Right. And also without guilt. Right. Like you don't want to sacrifice your gym membership or, you know, like, um, let's say a burn zone program so you can buy your kids shoes. Like what a, what a low way of life that is i mean of course it's admirable you love your kids great but like if you can take care of you like you'll always feel guilty you'll never feel enough you know you you won't have faith um in yourself to know that you're capable of doing anything and that is why you know these conversations are, are so important but let let's really like get get into the main yes. points of i went way off topic like five times yeah you did um and i'm just like turning the car back around Okay, so if you are at a point where you know that you deserve more, here is what you need to start implementing more of or just focusing on. Okay, so now, for one, if you're in this point right now, it's because I guarantee you that you weren't being educated about money. Or if you have, you haven't been doing it long enough. Okay? I have to admit with to to ad, admit this with you guys. Um, you know, I started my money education almost a year ago, and ever since then, like you know, um, my my money status, which is by all means, I wouldn't say is anywhere close to where I want to be. However, I would say we're at a different stage in our life. Gratefully, um, so like has changed so much ever since you know i started understanding the fundamentals of money okay like it is a science and it is an art 100 percent. just like weight loss just like anything it is a science and it is an art and i truly believe that because the world revolves around money right because it is currency is a means of exchange right it needs to be your top obligation to learn about money. You, you have to learn about it because here's the thing. If you're not learning about it, you can't be about it. And if you're not being about it, if you ain't playing the game, guess what? You can't win the game. Right? And that's why, like, you always hear people, oh, I want to win the lottery, blah, blah, blah. Even if you want the lottery, you're going to lose it all because you don't know how to play the game. <laughs> Right? Like what? Okay. I, I, I want to, I want to be, um, you know, I want to make it to the NFL so I can, you know, be around Tom Brady. Okay. But like, what? I don't know how to play football, but I don't know how to play football. He, I mean, within two seconds, he's going to be like, okay, bye. Right. The same thing's going to happen to your money. Like you don't know how to manage it. You don't know how to play the game. You don't know how to manage it. You don't know how to grow it how to save it and how to multiply it. There is a science and an art to it, 100%. So there's one book that we recommend. I want to give them actions. <clears throat> there's one book that we recommend and it's like $5. But this $5 book could make you a gazillion times more than that. If 
you read it, if you apply it, and if you take the next steps. And yeah, right? So like, if you want the most basic foundational, which I would recommend to anybody actually, every single one of you, there's been 33 people minimum purchasing this book today. Um, because if you, even if you feel like you're in a financially good position, fundamentals never disappoint. Your mm -hmm. fundamentals can never be wrong to go back to. And this is a book that could be read like every year. Because every time, as much as we evolve as human beings, if we go back and read something that we read five years ago, we're going to read it with a different set of eyes. Yeah. Because we're constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. Now you're either evolving up or you're evolving down. So I recommend that you get this book and start evolving up or continue evolving up with a new set of eyes. And maybe you've already read it. What is it called? Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So like almost a year ago when I started reading this book, like for one, I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with the words. Like I didn't like, I had to like really think about the graphs. Now it's a part of my life. You have to expose yourself to not just new information, but the right information. Okay. Trustworthy people. Okay, some people that we talked about on, on the show a lot is Grant Cardone. Rob Kiyosaki is also amazing, right? People that really strive to be like that. They've shown to be successful, not just for a year or for a couple of months, but they've grown and they've not just survived, by, but thrived from economic cycles, right? The same goes with weight loss. I don't care. If you got to have a six pack on stage, if 10 years from now you don't have that, then guess what? You ain't playing the game right, yeah, right? So can... like these dudes, like they play the game right. Robert Kiyosaki, I believe is an incredible teacher and I, mm -hmm. I truly um, do strive to be like him someday. He is extremely inspiring, just so patient and like he, he simplifies Oh, um, wicked simplifies. He simplifies concepts that would yeah. be very overwhelming for most people. And, um, and proven, when somebody can prove to be successful, even in an extremely down time, then that is somebody that you can trust with their information yes. that they're giving, right? Right. Um, we are in a down time, and probably it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. So, like... Your the time real is estate now. market's gonna crash. People are gonna foreclose so many houses. Um, people are losing jobs. The uh, checks that people are getting are gonna run out. Um, and then what are they gonna do? You know, it's like we want to get through this together, um, and we want you to get through it with us. Um, and that's why we do this because. A lot of it starts in your mind and then it starts with foundational and then it goes to foundational principles. You have to believe that you're worth it. Then you have to um, understand and grasp uh, foundational concepts and principles of money and how the game is played, which is this book, the beginning. He's got like a million books. I already posted a link in the Facebook group. So you can just go to that post and get the book there. It's like $5 and 40 cents or something ridiculous. Um, yeah. Okay. So the second part is the second reason why you, you are struggling is because you are comparing yourself to the average American. Your standards are low simply because of the environment that you're in. And again, this is why this show, um, you know, we are choosing to go out of our way and spend like at least five hours every single week just being in front of you like forget the behind the scenes part and i'm not saying this because i want any credit but because we do believe that it has to start with someone and you know what if it if it if that means that it has to start with us we are going to take the time invest our time in you in order to make a difference because here's the thing society teaches you to be average society compares you to the average person like we said before, the average person is overweight. The average person is sick. The average person is depressed. The and average, 
the average person is poor. Is poor. You can be broke. Remember, we talked about the difference between broke and poor. The average per person is poor. And broke. And broke, yeah. They, they literally have nothing to show for. They have nothing to show for. Like paycheck comes, nothing to right. show. Right, right. And then the ones that are a little bit be, maybe above average are either average or they try to keep up with the Joneses. The external, they on the external part, they try to make it seem like they have something to show for. But in real life, they have nothing to show for. The, the real successful one, they have everything to show for. Remember this. And the goal is not to look rich. The goal is to be rich. Yeah. Because if you are just trying to look rich, you will forever have no money. Yeah. That's called keeping up with the Joneses. And we, we want you guys to come up with us. We know we're going up, but why keep something great for yourself? Good things are meant to be shared. And that's why we always say, if you benefit from watching this show, share it with someone. Don't be selfish. Good things are meant to be shared. Just like when it's your birthday. You don't eat the entire cake by yourself, right? If you are, you're selfish. You want to share it with someone, right? So, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, you have to audit your environment. And we say it all the time with weight loss. You have to surround yourself with people who push you to go outside of your comfort zone, who push you to be better, who show you the way, who teach you the way, right? And that's why we created this community because we want to provide you the environment because I guarantee you that for most of you guys, right? The minute this show ends, it's like, you know, everything else in your life is not as supportive or drives you to be better. It's like, you have to put out fires. You have to do all this shit and that's fine. However, the more connected you are with people who challenge you to be better, the more opportunity you have to become better. Boogie's been trying to say something this whole time. Oh, now he knows. Now he doesn't have as much to say. There it is. One more. Oh, wow. And by the way, speaking, speaking about environment, the closer you are in proximity, right, to, to people who are successful, or you strive to be like, or you inspire to be like, right? The more likely you are to become it. Because the closer you are in proximity, the greater the chances of you emulating it, right? And to be honest, you guys inspire us, right? Because of you guys, our, our, our goals forever keep evolving, right? Because we want to inspire you. Because we know that when we show up better and we are more, it gives you inspiration to be more too. Sir, you're gonna have to come up here because. Mama, I'm Ty Ty. Yeah, that's fine. You can be Ty Ty upon my lap. Oh, Mama. You can be Ty Ty. Nothing cares. Because you're making a lot of noise back there. So, this one, so the next one of, of why, you know, you are not, I want to say it in, a, in an empowering way. The third reason why you... Can we you, recap the first two just so it's clear? Yeah. Number so, one. So the first one is you don't, you either have no education or you don't have enough education. That's number, that. Number two. Okay. Number two is you have low standards. You compare yourself to average. You are surrounded by average. Your environment shapes you. Okay. Number three. Number three is you have low self-worth. And this one is a deep one. And this one is the hardest one to overcome. Because how many times do you guys know people who know all the things, but for some reason they don't look like that? You see that in weight loss all the time. People always giving advice, do this, do that. I've, I've been blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. If your identity does not match where you want to go, you will always, always, always struggle. How do you identify? Yeah. Like, who are you? Yeah. And that requires some deep, deep work on yourself, right? Um, That's the hardest.
knowing that you are worthy of money. Here's the thing, because society compares you to the average, by the time you, you know, you go into school, you've already been beaten down, you've been, you've been called short, fat, you shouldn't do this, you're not capable of that. Oh, did you know that, it, you know, if you start a business 95%, uh, there's a 95% chance of your business failing all that oh bullshit, gosh. right? Like it's like before you do anything people will shut you down Right, so of course if you don't train your mind right to Really think outside the box and overcome it you will have low self-worth and I truly believe that that is the biggest problem with women because for so many years We've been told, just shut up, stand, stand pretty over there and whatever, right? Like deep down, we have low self-worth because of it, unless we chose to rise above it. And that requires so much time and so much deep work, right? And, and all these three elements, right? Like, you know, ha gaining more education, um, you know, putting yourself, auditing your environment, either getting rid of, you know, your current environment or inserting yourself in another one or both. And, you know, just having low self-worth, all these things take a lot, take a lot of time and a lot of effort, right? And what did we talk about at the beginning of this conversation, uh, of this conversation? The need for patience. You're not just going to wake up one day and feel, I am worthy of, Tens of millions of dollars. No Mama. freaking way. Mama. No freaking way. It requires daily work in your mind. Because society, the minute you leave the door, the minute you leave the door, your standards will go down immediately. Unless you are immersed within that environment. That's like, you're a badass. You're a multimillionaire. Um, you're worthy of all the things. I guarantee you that... If it's not for that, there's no way in hell you will think of yourself in higher terms. That's why community is so important too. And yeah. we really try to provide like a um, inviting, non-judgmental. Um, we tell the truth and, and, and we speak things that could feel hurtful or could sting. But it, the truth will set you free after it pisses you off. Because it's the truth, and when we know, when we hear the truth and it hurts, it's because we know it's the truth, but it exposes either an insecurity or some kind of weakness, or I'm wrong, or I'm I'm not doing it good enough, or all these things that we could think of as those things, or we could think of as an opportunity to be better. And to improve. Amen. You cannot improve upon something that you are not aware of. Mm -hmm. If I don't know I have a booger coming out of my nose, I'm not going to fix it. If you don't know they got something on your tooth, you're not going to get rid of it. Right. So the, the, but, but if somebody tells you, oh, you got a booger, you're like, oh, you know, you have this first, this feeling of like, oh, like I'm embarrassed or whatever. But then you can solve the problem. So you're welcome. I told you you had something in y'all tubes. Um, so that's what we're trying to do is tell you you got shit in your teeth so that you can get it out. Tell you got shit to work on so you can <laughs> fix your shit. Right? Awareness is the, is the first step to change. Mama? Yeah? Um, I forgot. So... To end this on a good note, I want each and every one of you guys to drop a comment and say, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm worth it. Ooh, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm worth it. Mama, I think that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, wow. And mama. also, I was going to say, I farted. Oh, okay. Right on Mama E's lap. Okay, I am healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm worth it. Healthy, wealthy, worth it. It's like H -W -W. Flirty, flirty and, and thriving. thriving. <laughs> healthy, wealthy, worth it. Healthy, wealthy, worth it. Healthy, wealthy, worth it. You guys, I guarantee you that if you repeat this. We should make a shirt. This, 
I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm worth it. Oh, healthy, wealthy, worth it, done. Ooh! Just three words. A girl with like flexing and like dollar bills just come out of her ass. No. From her cape. I'm gonna put a dollar bill on a dad shirt right here on the arm. Oh, shit. Ooh! And 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 it and just the front's just gonna say in bold caps, healthy, wealthy, worth it. Boom. It's oh, that's so one. good. Who wants one of those t-shirts? Mama, can I wear a t-shirt? You guys are awesome. Healthy, Mama. wealthy, worth it. Healthy, yeah. wealthy, worth it. Okay, nah, you guys. Nah, nah. What a great song. On that note, um, we hope that today's conversation um, has helped you to get over the hump. Remember, you are healthy. You are wealthy. You are worth it. You have to believe it, and believing it doesn't mean saying it one time or for an entire day a hundred times. It takes years of fixing that subconscious, okay? You are capable of anything, okay? But you have to believe it, you have to put in the work, and you have to put yourself in the right environment. Mm -hmm. So thank you for showing up today. If you enjoyed this conversation, then do us the favor and please share it. If you're watching this on YouTube, then please hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend. If you're seeing this in your email, then share it with somebody that you love. Great things are meant to be shared. And this is why we show up for you guys every single day, because we know that we have the truth. We don't have all the answers because we're still students as well and will forever, forever be, right? However, we do have the truth and we're not scared to talk about it. So on that note, I hope that you guys have an amazing day and we will catch you tomorrow on a relationship conversation. <gasps> See you then. Bye.